Hi everybody, Gary Williams again here, reaching out to friends and colleagues all over the world, particularly in the artistic industries, in the creative industries, just to see really how we're all coping with the coronavirus situation. And all the way from New York, and clearly a little bit thirsty, that's probably her morning coffee, is <laughs> Stacey Sullivan. How are you doing, Stacey? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm great. I'm, I'm not the, the most advanced with this computer thing, so this is fun for me. Well, if we could say, if there's any, at least one good thing that's come out of this awful situation is that you've learned how to use Zoom now, so now you're, you're super connected. <laughs> well, I guess so. I just signed up and I was like, wow, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. It's easy. Yeah. It works. It works. So um, I'm very glad because the last time we spoke, I mean, this is just a great excuse really for us to catch up, isn't it? Because the last time we spoke was in London. I don't even know how many years ago. You were there doing a cabaret at the Crazy Cox, if I remember rightly. Yeah. yeah. I remember Ruth Leon said to me, there's this wonderful man, Gary Williams. You should, you should talk to him. And I, I had no idea. We'd, we'd never met. And we had met at the American Bar. Yes. That afternoon before my show, and I just fell in love. I we we talked for over two hours, and I could have gone. It was, it was crazy. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon, and I could have gone until showtime at seven <laughs> or eight or whatever it was. <laughs> it was wonderful. I think that's, that, what, that's what happens if you do an interview in the American bar with cocktails <laughs> in hand. <laughs> but then I saw you perform. Yes. I had, I had no idea what kind of performer you were. You know, I was like I was talking to you like a, like a journalist, you know, and I had no idea. And I wanted to go back and redo the interview because I didn't realize what a pro you were as a performer. <laughs> I knew you were a great interviewer and I thought that's what you did. And then it was at, um, an open mic, I think, at, at Brasserie. That's right, yeah, that's right. You got up and sang and I went, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Because <laughs> I thought I was the pro, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Listen, you know, you, you know how to butter up your interviewer, don't you? Oh, yes. a very good way to start an interview. Oh, darn it, I felt so stupid. <laughs> so listen, this is, this, this is all about you, and I'm excited to have you here because uh, you're coming to us from, I guess you're in New York, but I'm not sure. I mean, I know you were, you were born, or you're from middle, you're from Oklahoma, I think, yeah, is that right? Very, very good, yeah. And um, so are you there, I mean, is that what you consider your, you know, in times of crisis, do you go running back to Oklahoma, or um, are you in New York? Where are you? No, I, um, I actually found home when I moved to New York. Right. I wanted to live there my whole life. From the time I was seven years old, I visited the first time. But I left Oklahoma right after college and went out to California. I lived in Los Angeles for 26 years. Wow. And it's where I met my husband. It's where I raised my children. And California is wonderful. But I love weather. I'm, I'm a weather person. And I think you saw my show, um, Stormy Weather. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. I remember. Um, I, I yearned for that. And I moved to New York in uh, 2012. And Hurricane Sandy hit. And I was, oh, my gosh. I asked for weather, but I didn't ask for this. <laughs> so, so tell me, I mean, the, the, the first question, the first thing I want to know is, I mean, you're right in the storm of this, uh, this terrible uh, virus right now. Yeah. Um, has anybody you know, uh, anybody close to you been affected by it? Well, my I mean, I mean, when I say affected, we've all been affected, but has anybody contracted it? Right. Well, my husband and I uh, have an apartment in New York and he works in New York and I, of course, work in New York. But we bought this house in the country in the Delaware State Forest in Pennsylvania last year. Right. And we've spent an entire year working on this house thinking that someday we would be able to be out here full time. We had no idea. So I was in New York City and uh, my niece uh, and her friends, they're all 22 years old. We had a big lunch on Thursday, March 5th. It was her birthday. They were all servers in Midtown Manhattan. And... Um, we, I had a big lunch and then we went walking to the vessel, that new thing on the High Line and had this glorious, the most wonderful kids. I mean, if, if you think millennials are, or the Z generation are tough, you just need to meet some of them because they, they're just wonderful people. And I, I was the only quote grown up <laughs> in the group. I felt so old, but they were so inviting and, and we cried and we laughed and we held hands and hugged all day. It was just a beautiful day. All five of them had coronavirus. Oh my God. They were oh servers in Midtown. God. So they're, they're waiting on all the people, the, the travelers, you know, and they all came down with it. My niece was the most serious. She called the CDC and it was the very beginning of the New York epidemic. And mm. um, 
pandemic was when it was just getting started, but I had a feeling and I have a friend who's on top of this kind of thing. And he told me weeks before that it was coming. And I, he's in my show at Carnegie Hall. And I kind of, he's like, Stacy, have you thought about what's going I said, Oh my gosh, he's just overreacting. You're right. But when, when my niece got sick, I self quarantined on, on March 7th out here in the country. And it's a good thing I did because I, I think I may have had a mild, a mild case of it. My, my husband and I are here together and, and that's a long, long uh, story, but we are in the country and we are safe. But I and, know and your niece is, is doing okay. She recovered. It was about 14 days and it was that off and on the extremely high fever. And she was calling 911 and they said, uh, they said, uh, you can come in, but they were, they knew. They knew it was happening and she was young, so she wasn't the target. But they, toward the end of it, she, um, she, it got worse. It would get worse and then it would get better. And then, then she had the um, gastrointestinal issues that she didn't even know were a symptom mm. of it. And then her friend who didn't come down with it, who was also at the lunch, flew home to Hawaii. She thought she didn't have it. She got tested when she got home to Hawaii. She was only the second person tested. In Hawaii and she had it. She took a little gift home. Little gift home. Yeah. One, one, one question I have for you is, um, you, you know, you are a cabaret performer. That's that is what you call yourself. That's what you do. And, and I know you, you're busy with it. Um, has it had any effect on your work so far? I mean, have you had to? I mean, everybody's nobody's got anything in the diary. But did you have any stuff that was there that's had to that's been taken out that's been cancelled? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had a, a big concert planned out in Long Island for Marion McPartland mm. with John Weber. That was canceled. That was March 22nd. Oh, wow. It was canceled. And then I had a, a booking at the uh, Beach Cafe on April 10th, which was canceled. And I'm supposed to be in uh, Brownville, Nebraska right now uh, doing a new show that I just created with uh, Todd Murray, which is uh, the musical romance of uh, Frank Sinatra and Peggy Lee. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, very, really dear friend. Someone that you're, you're very attached to her sound and her music. You've sort of it's been a very big part of your career singing the songs yeah. of Peggy Lee, hasn't it? Yeah, she changed my life. Um, just performing her music, and I don't really sound like Peggy Lee, but um, I fell in love with her story and I fell in love with her style, and um, it kind of took off. And this is her one hundred. This is her centennial. Big year. So we had, I had big, uh, well, the Carnegie Hall, and we had. Uh, the Peggy Lee Museum in North Dakota. We opened it in 2012 and we were going back mm -hmm. in July mm -hmm. uh, to be with all those wonderful people. And that of course is canceled. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot, a lot. I didn't realize how many things were canceled. I was also doing Catalina in uh, Los Angeles and the Grammy Museum for Peggy's Centennial. Um, was the, uh, the Carnegie Hall concert, which was sort of the centerpiece of the celebrations of the Peggy Lee Centennial year, um, is that still going ahead as planned so far? Or it's gone. No, um, Carnegie Hall has canceled all performances through. Ooh, I hate to give a date, but I think it's through July 10th. Mm -mm -mm. All performances. And we've rescheduled though. Okay, that's for, good. For next year, the last day of her centennial is Mar uh, May 25th. Oh, fantastic. Put so that in your calendar, Mr. Williams. <laughs> is that an invitation? It is an invitation. Oh, that's and kind. That's I, kind. I invited you to do the June 1st, and you couldn't. So um, it, the, world, the world is different now. And um, don't you find that um, I, I think there's clarity in this time at home alone? you really figure out what's important. Oh, that is absolutely true. And, and one thing that we have now with this time is that we're able to take stock, aren't we? Not only of the sort of big, you know, sort of life questions, but also of just, you know, what it is we're trying to do day to day and where we want our careers to go. And also have a, a look, sort of examine uh, a sort of what we're trying to achieve this year. And I think one of the nice things is that we've got the time to get ourselves sort of prepared for when the world does start to get back to normal, that we can hit the ground running and really sort of get on with some of the projects that we might have been a little bit lazy about in the past. Are you finding that this is, there's some opportunities in lockdown for you re with regard to your career? I, I, I really, um, I was working on a very exciting project when this happened. Um, I'm working with um, Jonathan Schwartz, who, uh, his father's Arthur Schwartz. 
and he, he asked me to do an album of his father's music. So I was working on that with Sean Harkness and it was, wonderful. I was more excited about that album than I've ever been excited. Well, I'm always excited about my albums, but there was such clarity when this happened as said, what's important to me. And I wasn't devastated by losing all the gigs or I knew that it would happen in time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you're much more together than I am because I kind of, I just went inside. I have not done, well, I'm working on this house. We bought this fixer upper a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I can paint for 12 hours straight. Mm -hmm. uh, we laid hardwood floors. We're just, we, we went inside. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I've, I've been reading all these books that have been stacking up for the, cause I was, you know, I'm a mom and for 20, 20 years I was, stay-at-home mom before this all these things i mean they're all you know that they're, they're important things as well and it's lovely that you've got a home to to attend to and you know it's nice to get caught up on the, on the reading there's nothing nothing wrong with with doing it and also with, there's nothing wrong with putting your feet up a little bit because so many of us have such frenetic crazy lives that we're flying yeah. from one place to the next so actually to have this enforced time off in some ways, is is a bit of a blessing, isn't it? Well, this is the first thing I've really done. This interview is the first time in a month, over a month, that I've actually. Maybe this is the first time you've done your hair and put makeup on for a month. I've almost first time I've showered. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband's going to be. Was my outside voice? Did I say that? <laughs> no, it was. It was good for me because I think there were so many years of being a mom and always going and doing, and then the career hit, hit right after the kids went to college, the Peggy Lee thing hit. Mm -hmm. So I think I created seven shows in eight years in New York. I hit the ground running. I made seven albums and I was just, I was uh, like a bat out of hell. It's like mm -hmm. all this creativity had been simmering inside of me, I think for so many years when I was home with my kids mm -hmm. and it came out and now I'm just, um, I'm enjoying the downtime. Mm. And I feel, I think that during this time, we're, we're hibernating. Those of us who can, you know, be at home, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're listening to music. Mm -hmm. We're watching films. We're getting caught up on these television series. Mm -hmm. Who powers this? It's the artists. The artists are getting us through. Mm -hmm. And during the uh, boom time, I think that we kind of neglect the people who do this kind of work, mm -hmm. you know, who, who make it who make it all happen. And what yeah. about online? If people want to sort of find out a little bit more about you and where they might be able to catch you performing when all this is over, what is your website? How can we find you? Um, StacySullivan.com. I, I am terrible at, at updating it. But, uh, I'm the... <laughs> well, it's a start. They can go there and see. They can see something. <laughs> Gary, you make me feel so Facebook. lazy. But Stacy Sullivan uh, at, on Facebook and Instagram is a great Stacey way to Sullivan, go. Um, so I, I think now is the time, uh, as well as listening to your lovely music, now is the time for you to get to work on your website. We've found <laughs> the thing that you really need to do. So um, actually, this, this thing is not going out live. This thing's... <laughs> We put out a week from <laughs> you've got seven days to make your website perfect. You know what this is this downtime has taught me, Gary, is that I'm not very ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> and don't talk, don't talk to British singers. Um, I it's always a joy to talk to you, Stacey, and I, I'm so glad you made the effort and had a wash for us and did your hair. And uh, <laughs> Keep painting, keep painting the house, but don't forget to keep uh, enjoying that wonderful music. And I can't wait to see you next year at Carnegie Hall. We shall have a, another May, cocktail together. May 25th. Put it on your calendar. May 25th. We're going to sing together. I've wanted to sing with you ever since I saw you perform at Zadell. Oh, so let's well, do it. it. A special celebration. Lots of love, Stacey. Take care. Thank you, Mary. Take care. Bye. Mwah.